be opening the Jester King microbrewery in Austin. And I'll let him go on about how to go pro. So if y'all give him your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate uh, being invited here tonight. It's quite an honor. And uh, I see some of the Austin Zealots here in the crowd. So, so cheers to the Zealots. Soon to be homebrew club of the year. So. <laughs> Um, well, I'll keep my, uh, I'll keep my, my uh, little talk here fairly brief just because uh, I don't want to disrupt the merriment too much. Uh, you know, it's a hell of a time here, so, uh, so I'll keep things going. But basically, I want to talk a little bit about the process of going pro as, as a home brewer. And uh, really, I think I want to start with, with where I think the whole process starts, and that is just, just having a, a passion for, for brewing. Um, basically, just I'll give you a brief backstory on me. I was uh, started started homebrewing when I was in, in, in law school, and just uh, um, got a law firm job in Austin. And, and the whole time, I was just kind of thinking about when I should have been working on some case or some shit. I was actually, you know, reading John Palmer and working on pro mash recipes, and you know, staying up at 3 a.m. brewing and then coming into work, not hungover, but just dead tired from brewing. So I had to uh, do something about that, and I think that's where it all started, is having that passion for, for brewing. So I think that's a good starting point for, uh, for anyone looking to make the jump to go and pro. So there's a couple ways to go about it. Uh, I'm familiar with, uh, with two of them. You know, one is becoming a uh, brewer at an existing brewery, and the other, of course, is, is starting a new brewery. As far as uh, getting hired as a professional brewer, there's the, uh, the formal education route, you know, UC Davis, Siebel in Chicago, Oregon State Fermentation Sciences degree. And those are all great. And uh, when you go on to uh, see the job postings, a lot of them ask for that formal education. But there's also the volunteer route as well. And I've seen brewers getting hired at Rar and Sons and, and Real Ale. And it's because they're just reliable, consistent volunteers. And, uh, and that's, that's been very successful for them. So, um, so that's a good way to go about it too. As far as opening a brewery in the state of Texas, it's, it's a great time right now for craft beer in Texas. We're 47th in the nation in breweries per capita. So we've got a long way to go to catch up with other states out there. You can see you know, California and Oregon and Colorado. And we're, we're way down there uh, you know, towards the bottom of the curve. So we, we have a ways to go to catch up. I mean, look at the density of, of uh, craft breweries per, per million people, and you can see Texas is just lagging behind the rest of the country. Sales growth of craft breweries has been much higher relative to the rest of the country. And you also have just a ton of population growth in, in the U.S. or in Texas here with four of the top ten fastest growing cities right here in Texas. So I think the first step is just having a good business plan, which is going to be your you know, chief fundraising document. It's also a good way to understand the craft beer industry and you know, really get a feel for, um, for you know, what, how to go about approaching opening a brewery. Um, I mean, as far as writing a business plan, which is a really great way to start, you know, I recommend sites, more general sites like startupnation.com and SCORE. Uh, you also have the Brewers Association, tremendous site for um, tremendous site for uh, information. And um, I might be losing my mic here, but uh, sorry. Okay, sorry. I just turned it down a little bit because you're really loud. Okay, I apologize. Sorry. Um, okay. Uh, you know, again, ProBrewer.com is is absolutely wonderful. Uh, New Brewer, which uh, the Brewer Association puts out, is just filled with wonderful statistics. Uh, so those are excellent sites for, for writing a business plan. And then some good books as well. Um, probably the most valuable for me was, uh, was Beer School on, uh, on the Brooklyn Brewery. Uh, Sam Calgione's book was also very helpful as well as the, the Ray Daniels book on starting your own brewery. Fundraising, that was one of the hardest parts of, uh, of opening a brewery. Um, having other people be confident enough in you to, uh, to give their, their hard-earned money on, onto you. One thing that just was a, kind of a message early on was that 
you know, debt kills small businesses. So if possible, I highly recommend the, uh, the, equity, uh, the equity financing route as opposed to the debt. You know, family, friends, angel investors are good sources of capital. Um, I mean, family and friends speaks for themselves. Uh, angel investors are just wealthy local individuals. Uh, you know, just approaching you know the local chamber of commerce, angel networks in your hometown, local media. And, you know, one of the things that helped us is we got a little mention in the uh, uh, Austin Chronicle. Just a little blurb, and then sure enough, people were coming and approaching us and you know asking you know, if they could get more information. So just, just getting a little bit of media can help you pick up steam. There's a lot of legal stuff to negotiate, and it's, it's kind of sucks, but, but all I'll say about that is as much as you can do yourself, the better. If you can come up to, so, to someone, if you can you know, write as much of it you can yourself and give that to a lawyer to you know, work over for final approval, well then that's good, rather than, rather than just coming to him or her from the start with nothing. Uh, as far as you know, what to brew and your identity, and this is this is totally up for debate. But but my feeling is that it makes sense to brew what you like, what you feel passionate about, you know, the beer that, that you care about, rather than saying, well, I need something light that'll appeal to people who really don't like beer or something like that. I mean, be yourself, both in, you know the identity of your country or company and the beer you brew. I mean, I'm I'm not originally from Texas. I didn't go to you know college here in, in Texas. It didn't, I don't think it would make sense for me to, you know, be the Austin Road Company with Longhorn Lager and Sixth Street Stout or some, some, something like that. So, so be yourself in your brain. That, that's my opinion. And of course, that's over for the bank. Uh, as far as some tips on uh, just, th this is a long, long list of, uh, uh, of stuff to consider when, when building a brewery, but I'll just kind of hit on the top three. One I would say as far as system sizing, at least 30 barrels, because you'll be amazed at how fast a uh, you know 20, 15 barrel brewery can be maxed out very quickly. Uh, brewers uh, complain often about not having slow floors. It may seem basic, but, but that's a big thing to have. Otherwise, we we'll spend hours each day, you know, mopping floors because we work in a wet environment as brewers. Uh, and then finally, you know, there's a hell of a lot of used equipment out there. Uh, I mean, for example, we got our heat, we budgeted 25 grand or 2500 for our heat exchanger. We got it on eBay for you know 150 bucks. You know, we uh, we, we got a glycol chiller from a uh, dryer's ice cream factory that was going out of business. So you can get used equipment out there for really cheap. It's out there. You just just have to look for it. And, and so it's not too hard to find. And finally, ask for help. I mean, the, uh, the local brewers that we've encountered here in Texas have been super, super helpful. Uh, the guys are real and have been unbelievable. Same with 512 and Independence and Live Oak, you know, the breweries in my neighborhood. And, you know, uh, so seek out your local brewer for help because they're there to help. And, uh, and also, I mean, like when I, when I met with, uh, you know, Brad Farstein from Real Ale, all he asked was that, you know, in return, you know, when people ask you for advice, give it to them. I'll tell you everything I know, but you, you pass that on. So, you know, I'll put my email up there, and it's also on our website. So feel free to contact me, and I'd be glad to answer any questions you have. Um, are there any, uh, I'd be happy to answer some questions now. I mean, I understand there's kind of a party going on, but, uh, but uh, uh, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna sit down and let people uh, enjoy their beer, but uh, come up, I'm gonna be here for a while, so just, if you wanna have any questions, just come up and talk to me. So thanks, folks, appreciate being here.